This is Rod. This is Boomer Guitar Sessions, episode six. Today, what we're going to talk about is why guitar players improvise. Why we improvise. Uh, as long as I've been a guitar player, my heroes have been people who reshaped sound. And they've done stuff that I thought when I was a kid was impossible. And that is some of the, what we're going to talk about today. So why do we improvise? Okay, and it's improvising something you want to be working on. That's another question. Maybe it isn't. Maybe it isn't. I'll play the devil's advocate. So first reason why we improvise. Improvising is the birthplace, birthplace of the guitar riff. Most guitar riffs come out of jam sessions. Okay, so if I'm just jamming on a... Guitar players don't take out their quill pen and compose music like, like classical composers do. A lot of their stuff comes from the act of improvisation and monkeying around and keys and stuff like that. So the whole songwriting section, the history of the guitar from like, we'll say, even if we just date it back to like the 60s to the present, that's how a lot of this stuff is composed. You're, you're jamming on stuff and you're, and you're working on stuff. So that's the first reason. A songwriting reason uh it is the, the guitar riff is not something that we typically write without an instrument in our hand and it's not something we particularly brain think it's a it's a finger think so first reason now thing about guitar players that maybe is obvious or maybe it isn't obvious but we have a bit of an advantage over people who read sheet music because we're not held back by what can be written down. In other words, most of us can't read music. If we're being honest, a lot of us can't read music. Now, in some senses, that's that that can be a minus. But in other senses, that can be like, okay, so because we don't understand some of that stuff, we come up with stuff that 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 is not does not. It goes beyond all that. So like. Uh, <laughs> notate all that I don't know I don't care it's not my job to notate it it's my job to make magic on on the guitar so all that stuff comes from improvisation it is not something that comes from your brain it is not something that I'm gonna I'm gonna go I'm gonna start on the sixth fret and I'm gonna no it is it is through improvisation it is through it is through making music on the fly, which is what improvisation is. If anybody didn't know what improvisation is, that is it. So we, we learn to make music on the fly. We have to learn our instrument in order to do that. But it's not like we're starting from scratch every time we play. But we learn our instrument. We learn about music. We learn. Anyway, that's what we're talking about. OK, so next trick. Next thing. Improvisation isn't a neat trick. It is a sort of survival skill, is what I would consider it, because most of this music that we all like and guitar players play, there's an element of improvisation in it already. So if you're learning how to play something from a guitar player who improvises, and you don't know how to improvise, then you're going to be approaching it note for note like a classical violin player would, and that's kind of weird. It doesn't really work that well. I don't know. How do you how do you notate soul? How do you do all that kind of business? So the deal is that improvisation is not for me, it's not optional in my students. It's it's not really an optional thing. Um, it's not a, just a flashy skill. It is a survival skill. It is a survival skill. It helps us out of many musical jams. Uh, a lot of our solos, a lot of them maybe have composed solos even composed solos started out as jams and little little noodly things and then we put the noodly things together and then we compose a solo that way some people do play solos absolutely note for note sure sure they do angus young like back in black or um you shook me all night long if you play any other solo than what that is then you're you're probably wrong nobody wants to hear you do your noodle thing over you uh uh, signature Angus Young solo. 
So, but with that said, it is a survival skill. Now, if, if you think about it, in the history of the guitar, and I say the history of the guitar, I'll take it back, and it's it goes back to it goes back for forever. But we'll take it back to Charlie Christian. The electric guitar started from from my from my ears started with Charlie Christian. We have Charlie Christian. We have people like. Um, with T Bone Walker, we have people like Chuck Berry. These were all icons at BB King. They taught us how to do things. These are icons. When I say they're icons, they shaped the way the guitar is played. Whether you know they're playing or not, whether you know their music or not, you if you play the guitar, you've done stuff that they pioneered. Uh, okay. So with that said, every last one of them didn't become a guitar icon by reading music. Every last one of them didn't become a guitar icon by memorizing their solo um, all the time. Every last one of them can improvise and, and uses improvisation as that survival skill. It is the thing that when you hear the magic of that person, Jeff Beck, I think of, I think of Eddie Van Halen, when you, you just cut the rope with Eddie Van Halen, it's like, yeah, that's not notatable. That that vibe is not notatable. Vibe's another thing we need to talk about. So with that said, every last guitar hero has improvisational ability. Tony Iommi, Black Sabbath would not have been a band were it not for the jam session. Black Sabbath would not have been a band if it were not for the blues because they started off using blues as a, another survival skill to learning how to play blues and learning how to play music that wasn't just memorized. And just jamming, getting in a room with musicians and jamming. All right. So the importance of pro improvisation. One more thing that we're going to talk about. Or maybe a couple more. Okay. So uh, improvisation is not all. It, it helps us self-edit. When I say this, in a world that does not have written music supply for you to, to dictate every every movement you make when you're playing with people you have to acquire the ability to self-edit yourself that means omitting stuff that is not necessary that means phrasing that's phrasing your melodies that means um uh editing in real time self-editing in real time omitting or maybe it means adding okay any any combination of things but it is a skill that is acquired through improvisation and impro improvisation alone you don't learn to self-edit by staring at a piece of paper or by memorizing a guitar solo and, and never playing it differently okay so the idea of the idea of recreating or creating music in the structure of a song part of your stuff is going to be created and it's going to be spontaneous um, not the whole song necessarily. I'm not saying that. Wouldn't suggest that. But if you go back at, again at the history of the guitar, every last one of these um, examples are of people who edited themselves. They play phrases. They don't just play scales. Okay, and and they play, they play their phrases. They edit them. They they edit themselves and they omit and they add and then they do all, all kinds of stuff to make the music what it is so now i have five tips for you to get into improvisation okay so you never played improv you never never tried improvisation before first thing you got to do in my opinion <laughs> is immerse yourself into the sounds of people who improvise okay so who are the people that improvise as i said the guitar heroes of the last 90 years Okay, we could we could take it back to Tony Iommi or Eric Clapton when he was in the Blues Breakers and Cream, uh, Jimi Hendrix, Jimmy Page, uh, the Eddie Van Halens of the world, the, uh, Carlos Santana. You name any iconic guitar player, and you can learn off of them. Now, what you're going to take, no matter what age you are, you're going to take certain things that you gravitate towards that you like. And that's going to be a part of your sound. And then what I would do with these, you immerse yourself in these sounds. One of the things that I talk about with my students is vibing what they're doing. So when we vibe. Oh. 
we hear the guy phrase, we try to we try to copy the sound and the feel, and it doesn't necessarily have to be all the absolutely note for note. Though some of that's good too. It is the feel of it that matters, and it's the 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 overall the vibe of it. So listen and vibe along with along with your favorite players and these these players that improvise. And it could be uh, the guy from Polyphia. He improvises. Steve Vai. Uh, Eddie Van Halen, I said, Jeff Beck, uh, you name it. If the guy, if they're doing crazy, crazy guitar stuff, I didn't notate that. I didn't figure that out. That, that was all improvisation. So anyway, that's the first. That's the first tip. Second tip is get cozy with your pentatonics. It's a good place to start. Pentatonics are a good place to start. Uh, with that said. I would not just narrow my focus to just pentatonics in one in one uh, musical style. I would not just use one. I can solo over one sound. That might be a start, but eventually, what you're going to want to do is you want to use these same pentatonics in um, in a variety of different styles. So, let's say we could do we could do metal. If you like metal, if you don't like metal, you don't have to do it. If you don't like any of these. You don't have to do it, but metal. I say country. I say classic rock. I say uh, funk, R and B. Okay, learn how to speak multiple languages with the pentatonic. So, and then when you play these things and you, you play the pentatonics and you practice the pentatonics, you get the scale fingerings down. But get those down, and it's not about when you solo. It's not about playing scale fingering. It's a. It's about. It's about phrasing. It's about phrasing, uh, playing melodies, playing uh, statements, playing something that is singable. Let's give this a shot for a sec. So there I was I was trying to phrase I wasn't just I, was, I just wasn't playing fast notes that's not what improvisation is and I was I was trying to vibe Jimi Hendrix the, the sound of his guitar is something that I don't know it's not the easiest way to learn that is not to notate it it's it goes beyond notation okay so tip three Build yourself a killer set of backing tracks of all different kinds of styles and practice these pentatonics to it, to those, to those. As I said, country, funk, blues, can't forget the blues, can't, rock and roll, pop music, yeah, do pop music. I would do it all and do do it all, okay? Even if you, you could even do a little bit of jazz, try it out, try it out. So. Take the pentatonics and work 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 through all the various different styles that's a good place to start and as i as i said uh with these songs it would be good you know to phrase think in terms of phrases rather than thinking in terms of i'm going to play <laughs> playing a scale is nice but you, you want to play music okay tip four Deep dive into the sounds of your favorite guitar players. Make uh, what I do. What I did is make a Spotify playlist. It's like thirty-three hours long of stuff that hey, I like the sound of that. Now, these are going to be the things that I'm going to listen to. And I'm going to vibe to, and I'm going to play with. Vibing is a is a is a, a practice in itself. That's that's uh, it's going to be a future lesson here on Boomer Guitar Sessions. So, but so make a playlist of your own favorite stuff that's that's going to be the stuff that is going to be this you're going to it's going to make you you how did you get your sound it's going to be this and as i said pick players that that solo if you only listen to rhythm guitar players then that's not gonna that's not gonna help you all right all right so tip five once you get your uh, um you made your playlist of backing tracks, you made your playlist of vibe stuff, 
practice the, the, the scales that you learn, and then the, the, this will be a future lesson in, in Boomer Guitar Sessions. Pentatonics, I would learn pentatonics, little little things all over the fingerboard, okay? Little little box patterns here, little, I have, everybody, every guitar player has their favorite positions. And then, uh, and then focus on, focus on just playing music, making music with, with backing tracks, with loops, with uh, songs, okay? So uh, don't just mind, mindlessly play through scales. Nobody wants to hear that, okay? Make music out of the scales, make, play phrases and play, you can you can you can go go crazy on it, but it's like uh, so anyway. So meaningful phrases, no clusters. Dig down deep. You know, hit that note. <laughs> different kinds of styles what I suggest to my students is don't pigeonhole yourself just to be one different one certain sound you know that is right that is somebody's other somebody's ideal maybe they just want to be like Stevie Ray Vaughan but it's like if you're going to be an original Stevie Ray Vaughan was an original uh and what made him original is he listened to all kinds of stuff so anyway until next time this is Rod, Boomer Guitar Sessions. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. Tell 50 of your closest friends about what we're doing here, and I'll see you next time. And if you have any questions or any comments, post them below, and see you next time.